Take a look at the person next to you And say God loves you and I love you too Now feel the love in the sanctuary Lift your voice and repeat after me We come together 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 In the name of love We come together 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 In the name of love person next to you Say I recognize the God in you Feel the love in the sanctuary Now lift your voice and repeat after me Oh, we come together We come together We come together We come together We come together, we come together. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Unity of Springfield. We're going to begin our service today with a song called Love is My Decision, number 25 in the Blue Book. Stop. 
be seated. Well, we have lit this Christ candle as a part of our connection to the Greater Unity Movement, and we connect and hold individual ministries in prayer each week. And this week we hold all the ministries in the state of Vermont in prayer. And let's go into prayer right now as we send out heartfelt blessings to everyone in the state of Vermont. And we see those blessings of love encircling the earth, going all the way around the globe as a radiant light, as a glowing energy that blesses, that heals, and makes whole. And for this, we give thanks, and so it is. Amen. And now, we invite Linda as our platform assistant to share the announcements and many other things as well. Good morning. Welcome. We are so glad you're here to join us today for worship, and we extend a special welcome to those of you visiting for the first time. On your way in today, you should have received a welcome packet, and we also have a gift for you. So please see one of our greeters after today's service. Unity is a worldwide spiritual movement. We are an inclusive community, and we welcome all people. Our announcements for this week are Tuesday at 11 a.m. Peggy Tell will host our Unity Prayer Service in Zoom. This is a space to support with prayer those on our prayer list, on our hearts, and in our communities. At Wednesday on, at 5.30, Karen Kelly will lead the gathering meditation via Zoom, creating a sacred space for quiet, introspective meditation. Today is our Unity Youth and Family Ministries Summer Spirit Rally from noon to 3. Come join the fun, connect with our spiritual community, and find out more about our Youth of Unity program in a fun and playful way. Other upcoming events scheduled for our youth and family ministry are a play date on July 7th at noon and creative adventures on July 28th at noon. Both of those will be held in the youth ed room. Be sure to check out our used book sale set up in Margaret Kane Hall today before it goes. It's ending on July 14th. Join us for fellowship after the service and browse at your leisure. Sales are on a love offering basis. You're invited to participate in the monthly Healing Crystal Bowls meditation with Peggy Patty on Thursday, July the 4th at 6 p.m. Immerse yourself in the soothing, healing vibrations as we send harmony, peace, and balance into our community and into our world. This is a suggested love offering of $15. All are welcome to join in the Flute Circle with Dave Tell on Thursday, July 11th at 1 p.m. Held in the sanctuary, beginners are encouraged to come as well. Next Sunday is our monthly fellowship potluck after the service. Bring your favorite dish to share. Be a Unity Barista, and I'm going to ask Deb Smith to come up and talk to us about this, since I'm not a coffee drinker. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I'm not sure where to begin, but I'll start here. Uh, Chris and I are donating a Nespresso system to Unity. And whether you're a coffee drinker or not, um, you can be taught to create a wonderful beverage in very short order. It does both decaf and regular. And it's a, just a different way for us to 
shall I say, raise our coffee vibration. <laughs> and we're not all destined to be ordained ministers or licensed teachers or even board presidents, uh, you know, whatever. But <clears throat> you can be a certified Unity Barista. <clears throat> Please sign up in the foyer. It will be July 13th. That's a Saturday, two weeks from yesterday. And we'll have all the equipment here. And I'll be here from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. I think sign-ups are at 10 and 11. You're welcome to stay as long as you would like. But I would say if you've never handled any kind of you know, coffee beverage, I will have you competent at using this wonderful machine in under half an hour. So, <clears throat> you know, there's, we've all heard about the elite strike force team, you know, uh, the Navy SEAL Team 6. Well, I want us to become Unity Barista Team 417. 417 is the street address. <laughs> and there's another unity story behind this. When I first mentioned the possibility, Reverend Alden shared a story, which is another story of Reverend Alden's that made me think, this guy reminds me a lot of my brother. <laughs> Apparently, an espresso truck or some shipping truck was driving through Florida, yeah. and a box of Nespresso pods fell off the truck. Yeah. Remarkably, Reverend Alden salvaged the box and held on to it until he moved a 1,000 miles away, <laughs> and a parishioner came up and said, hey, can I bring one of these to church? If that isn't serendipity, I don't know what is. It's coffee destiny. <laughs> Thank you. So anyway, I hope this will be a lot of fun. And that's Saturday, the 13th of July, 10 AM. And hope to see you all there. Thank you. There you have it, our divine caffeine order. Okay, emails are sent out weekly that have information on current happenings and how to join in events. To sign up for our emails, ask a greeter for a blue card and fill out both sides or visit our website to subscribe. Also, check out our website for up-to-date information, all small letters, Unity of Springfield IL, Dot org. We would like to express a special thank you to Doug Raffa, who will be performing our special music for today's service. Also, creating our lives and our world through the thoughts and beliefs we hold in mind is a spiritual principle we practice at Unity of Springfield. We also know this truth. Together, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the source of all good. And our vision statement, together, a world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awakening. Our mission statement, we recognize God is love, individualized in all people. Therefore, we provide a positive environment for spiritual growth that empowers all to be God's love in the world. And now, Mary Disler will be reading the daily word for today. Good morning. Good morning. The Daily Word for today, Sunday, June 30th, 2024, is World Peace. Why think small? Huh? 
and the affirmation is affirming the divinity of all the world's people, I envision world peace. Peace is meant for every person of every faith in every land. Today, I look beyond the news of the world, reports of strife and conflict, even the agitation and unforgiveness in my own heart, and find the peace of God. I believe the desire for lasting peace is within each person's heart. In prayer, I affirm this truth and envision this desire growing stronger among the world's people until peace can no longer be denied. It is our shared destiny to live in peace. When each person wants for all people what they want for themselves, harmony will blanket the earth. Harmony will blanket the earth. I affirm the peace I wish for myself is dawning in the hearts of others. In prayer, I see them safe and secure in the heart of God, forever at peace. And from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in all ways. The Lord be with all of you. Again, the daily word is world peace. And can we say this lovely affirmation together, please? Affirming the divinity of all the world's people, I envision world peace. And before we hear today's meditation and message from Reverend Alden, we have Doug Raffa performing some very special music. You all know this song. It's known all over the world. <clears throat> and we want you to sing the verses with us. It was written by Paul Williams, one of the greatest composers of the 20th century, who wrote Star Wars, Evergreen, and My Girl. And if you read about him, he sounds like he has a lot in common with unity. He's active in the 12 steps, and he wrote a book about affirmations. And does anybody know the inspiration of this song? <clears throat> it was inspired by Jiminy Cricket. And we're ready. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? <laughs> and we're, we'll start again. Yeah. We're going to have to reboot. There we go. We're going to reboot. Here we go. Ready? One, two. Why are there so many? <laughs> you have four. Okay. Four. All right. Third take. <clears throat> Third take, three. take three. And we want you to sing the, I, we all know it, so. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? And what's on the other side? Rainbows are visions and only illusions. And rainbows have nothing to 
high So we've been told And some choose to believe it I know they're wrong Wait and see Someday we'll find it The rainbow connection The lovers, the dreamers, and me Who said that every wish Would be heard and answered When wished on the morning star Somebody thought of it and someone believed it Look what it's done so far What's so amazing That keeps us stargazing And what do we think we might see Someday we'll find it The rainbow connection The lovers, the dreamers, and me all of us under its spell We know that it's probably magic Have you been half asleep? And have you heard voices? I've heard them calling my name Is this the sweet sound That calls the young sailor? I think they're one in the same I've heard it too many times To ignore it It's something that I'm supposed to be Someday we'll find it The rainbow connection The lovers, the dreamers, and me One more time Someday we'll find it the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. We didn't get off to a very good start, and I used to have a voice teacher that really thought I sounded like Kermit the Frog. Ah. <laughs> Who, who's your voice teacher so I can learn to sing like Kermit? Oh. I, she, she did. Uh, <sighs> well, let's prepare for a time of meditation. Let's just uh, begin by taking the energy of that song and this whole idea of making that rainbow connection the divine connection with our true selves. And we begin by just gently closing our eyes and letting go of all of the, the business, the activity, all the stuff of the outer world. As we allow ourselves and give, us, give ourselves permission to just be here, to relax and let go. And taking in a deep breath, we imagine that we're breathing into ourselves the very life, light, and energy of the universe. The life, light, and energy of spirit. A power and a presence and an activity that blesses, that heals, and provides what is needed. With each breath that we exhale, we imagine ourselves being free from all of the concern and worry of our lives and that of others. We see that being dissolved, being handled, and being resolved in a way that brings good. And in this way, we can enter into a time of stillness and quiet, a time of spiritual communion, 
and contemplative prayer. Breathe in energy and life and love. Breathe out fear. Breathe out worry. Breathe out concern. And the deeper that we go, the more we feel at ease with ourselves and our lives. That whatever changes might be going on, whatever uncertainties may be before us, we are at peace. We are okay with how the unfoldment of our life is going the direction. And sometimes it takes the passage of time for all the elements of the physical world to line up so that we receive what is our heart's desire. We can imagine it in our mind's eye clearly and quickly but it takes the material world a little longer to catch up. And this is where being a calm, non-anxious, peaceful presence for ourselves and others is important. And right now in this moment, we find that consciousness that awareness is right there within us. Not something that we have to strive toward or hunt around for. It's right here. It's right now. And each one of us is fully aware and fully present in this awareness of stillness and calm and of accepting the flow of life as it is right now. We have made that rainbow connection. And it is a connection between who we are as a spiritual being, as a soul, an evolving soul that is learning and growing. It is a connection between ourselves and the creator and sustainer of all that is. We call that something God. We call that something spirit. We call that something our higher power. It doesn't matter so much what we call it, but we sense and feel that it is there always there, ever present, and ever supporting and nurturing and guiding each of us in our next great steps forward. And so for the next few moments, let us sit in the quiet and calm and peace of this place or wherever you're experiencing this service right now. Open and receptive to the flow of spirit for a moment in the silence.
from the stillness of spirit. We emerge from this time of meditation with a renewed awareness of who we are as a spiritual being having a human experience. And from our inner spiritual connection, we're able to greet this human experience with confidence and with an awareness of the good that is always unfolding as we remember to look for it. And for this time of meditation and inner reflection, we give thanks and do so in the name and through the power of the living Christ spirit within us all. And so it is. Amen. Give you a moment to return. I'd like to thank everybody who helps make this service possible and to our music staff today and uh, to Gain, Alyssa, and Doug, who really uh, brought this heart into that song and I think helped us engage in what that rainbow connection is about. And that's what the music is supposed to do, is to kind of take you into another place. So thank you for letting me be the rhythm guitarist in the band this morning. And I want to thank Linda and Mary for their platform work today, to Chris and Danny back in the booth, and to uh, Becky and Chris Zell, where are you guys? Anyway, for being our greeters today, and to Chris Farishan. We have three Chris's working to make this service possible today. And Chris Farishan's our administrator who makes sure all of our slides look really good and many other things as well. And I'd like to welcome everybody who's watching us on Facebook and YouTube live stream. When I moved to um, Springfield, shortly thereafter, I got one of these. For those who can't see what's on the screen there or can read the fine print on this uh, piece of paper, I got a jury summons, not from here, but from Florida. And I got it about two weeks after I got to Illinois. And on the back page of this uh, document, it says this, failure to comply with your summons may result in a fine being imposed and or contempt of court charges being filed against you. Welcome to Illinois. <laughs> They're just trying to scare you to come down there, and I don't know if they'd actually send a sheriff out to find you. Has anybody had that happen <laughs> for not responding to a jury summons? Oh, they don't make it easy to get out of jury summons, at least they don't in Florida. They have you an option of going on a website and going through that. You can send them an email. You can even mail them a letter. Um, I can't remember which form of communication I used to let them know that I wasn't showing up for this jury summons. But I can assure you I didn't show up on January 17th like they wanted me to. In fact, I looked at my calendar to see what I was doing. I had a big staff meeting that morning online here in Springfield. So, have any of you received a summons to appear for a court or jury duty? How many people have had to go to jail? Oh my God, I think everybody just raised their hands. They know, they know yeah, they, they, they track you down. Well, most of us have. Now, when I lived in Indiana, and I, I lived in Indiana the first 10 years of my life, and then later on, for 22 years. And during those 22 years as an adult, I didn't serve on a jury. Not once. Did not get a summons. You wonder why that happened? I mean, how, how did I get out of it? In Indiana, clergy don't have to serve on juries. State policy. Not bad, huh? Until I did get a jury summons when I was living in Indiana. But it was not from the county court or the state court. It was from the federal court a hundred miles from my house. Clarksville, Indiana. That's where my son lives right now. Federal court, much closer to Louisville, Kentucky. 
I managed to get excused from that as well. But Donna had been given all kinds of opportunities to serve on juries when we lived in the state of Indiana. And every time she was excused from serving. Wonder how? And you know, one of those times it was going to be out of town, sequestered. It was a murder trial, if I recall. The reason why she was excused from jury duty is when you go in and you're being questioned by the attorneys from both sides, the district attorney, the defense attorney, and it was probably the defense attorney that asked the question, what is, what is your job? And her job was the youth and family director of a church. Dismissed. I'm not making this up. You can ask her later. Oh, being summoned. I'd like us to take a look at a very significant biblical summons from the Hebrew scriptures. And you see here a slide of somebody standing in front of a bush that's burning. You probably remember this story. And Moses received a summons from this bush to go to Egypt and free the Israelite people. And you can read the passage about this from the book of Exodus 3 and 4. You can go there. And I recommend doing that. Just grab a Bible, any Bible. You can use this Bible over here if you want to. I've got tons of Bibles in my office. And read the story. It's really good. Or you can get on your phone. You just get out your phone. Put in BibleGateway.com. Don't do it right now, later. And you'll pull up the Bible in every version and translation you want. And you put it in Exodus 3, 4. It's a good story to read. But instead of quoting the Bible for two full chapters this morning, I'm going to read you a quote from a Unity book that will sort of um, bring this ancient story to kind of a modern um, understanding. And so we read, mm -hmm. God, that's the brush, by the way. Moses, I want you to go and talk to the Pharaoh about freeing my people. Moses said, who, me? You got to be kidding. You are kidding, aren't you? God, not at all, my friend. I'll be with you. Don't worry. Moses, you know, God, the people aren't going to believe me when I tell them that I'm going to free them from slavery, and you know they're going to want references. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Telling them that their ancestors' God has been talking to me just isn't going to cut it with these guys. God says, just tell them my name is I am who I am. But that's not important right now. Get busy, Moses. There's lots of work to be done. These Egyptians have been bad news for my people. Man, I'm going to sure make those guys uh, see a few things. Start getting ready for a road trip, Moses. Moses. Wait. Yeah, but what if they don't believe me? Or even listen to me. What if they tell me I've been smoking something? You're going to think that I've uh, gone off the deep end. God, for crying out loud, Moses, where's your faith, man? You're such a wimp. I can't believe my own judgment in picking you for this job. Of course, who's to say that any other human would do any better? Um, okay, hold on a minute. Well, what's that in your hand? Uh, it's a rod. Well, toss it on the ground. Oh, and be sure to step back a little bit. Uh, these miracles are sometimes require a little bit of elbow room, and instantly the rod becomes a snake. And Moses is scared of snakes, and he goes, ah, and he goes running off. Okay, that's the story there. Uh, I was quoting a, a book <laughs> called Wisdom for a Lifetime by Alden Studebaker, and thank you for the, uh, indulging me in quoting myself in a talk. <laughs> All right. I think that this part of the Bible is the funniest and most comedic in the entire 66 books of the Protestant Bible. I have no idea if that was the intention of the writers 
to be funny. And how can any of us know what their intention was, really? But if you read it through and you go and you, you, know, you can use that Bible right now once in my office or your phone, Moses did everything he possibly could to get out of his summons. He says, I, I, I don't want to do this. Get somebody else. But he couldn't refuse because it was an offer he couldn't refuse. Where have you heard that line before? I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. The question arises, don't we have free will? Can't we refuse or accept whatever is presented to us? We have that right, don't we? We're not manipulated by a god or gods or a bunch of people of having to do something that we don't particularly want to do. Well, that's true. We make choices all the time. And our choices are ours, unless we decide to turn our choices over to somebody else to choose for us. You know, you, you know, you're there in a restaurant, you don't know what to order, and you just turn to your partner or somebody there, and you say, well, you choose for me, I can't decide. Let me, and then, you know, somebody might just jump in and go, well, let me help you. You're going to love this. But it's still our choice to turn that power over. It's free will. It's our right as spiritual beings and as human beings to select what we want. And, and this is a really big and, there are times we end up with an offer that we can't refuse. And so we live with this paradox of free will and an offer you can't refuse. And sometimes we're given an offer that we can't run away from. And it doesn't make any logical sense. It should be one or the other, free will or some sort of destiny or predestiny. Can it really be both? But you know, life is full of paradoxes where two differing views have truth in them. This is one of those incidences. And it happens but when we are the ones to fulfill a certain, a certain task, and there's nobody else to do it. You can call it a calling, a summoning, an offer you can't refuse. It just takes many forms, and in every case, it's something that for us is for our spiritual growth. There are lessons that we need to learn, and there are things that need to be done only by us. In case in point, Moses in the burning bush is calling him into leadership. You see, Moses was a, kind of at a transition at this point in his life. You know, he had his early life where he was born and he was raised in Egypt. And then later on, when he became a, a young man, he saw an Israelite being abused by an Egyptian and he killed that Egyptian and he had to get out of Dodge. He had to get out of Egypt. And so he went off to a place called Midian, which was to the east. And he had the middle part of his life where he became married, he had family, he was a shepherd. He had it relatively easy, I mean, as easy as life could be back uh, 3,300 years ago. Until he was out there with his flock and wandered into the burning bush, yeah. And he got his summons. And he was tasked with a job, free the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. This is a pretty big deal. Imagine yourself in Moses' position. You're just a shepherd. You're just a guy with a bunch of sheep and stuff, and you're being told to go back to where you're wanted by the law. 
and free everybody who's been there in slavery for the last 400 years and take them somewhere. He was not feeling up to it. He felt <clears throat> inadequate, reluctant, and resistant. But he had to do it. It was an offer he couldn't refuse. It was his to do and no one else's, and it was a time for Moses to experience some spiritual growth. And it was also a time for the Israelites to grow up as well. Remember, metaphysically or allegorically, when you see the children of Israel in the Hebrew scriptures in the Old Testament, they are representative of us. And what we go through, in this case, being in bondage in Egypt. And when we're in bondage in Egypt, that is representative of us being overly attached to the material world. So it was time for the Israelites to get away from their slavery but cushy life in Egypt and grow a little bit and to find a place of their own, the promised land, the land of Canaan. And Moses was the person to help them do that. And Moses represents faith. If you remember back, Moses you know, was drawn from a basket floating down a river. Moses' name literally means to be drawn forth. And so it's this faith that is drawing the Israelites and us forward out of our comfort zones into the transformation zone. And that's something a lot of us kind of go, I, I like it the way it is. I don't want to change. I don't want to go downtown. Don't want to do it. Now, as a unity writer, Elizabeth Sand Turner, she did a lot of metaphysical Bible interpretation in her three books. And let's take a look at what she had to say about Moses. And she said, Moses' objections arose from the human way of viewing matters. As is often the case with us, in prayer we are inspired as to what to do, but are sometimes afraid to try. We do not believe that we have the power, nor do we think we can get the necessary cooperation from others. We should remember that when there is a spiritual prompting to act, there is also the spiritual power to do so. We can think about this with regard to other situations in life, that we too are often called to show up in the lives of others, to be of help, to be of service, to help others escape their own internal slavery from certain habit patterns. Have you ever helped somebody like that? Have you ever helped somebody deal with addictions? Have you ever been of a support to somebody who was really in need of taking some steps forward in their life? I think probably most of us have. Back in the 90s, I was on a team from Unity Worldwide Ministries, as they're called today. It was a team called the Minister's Assistance Team. And we were trained, we received training in supporting ministers who were addicted primarily to alcohol. And so part of this team, we did interventions. We set up treatment places to take folks and provided support to our colleagues in this way. And I was on one of the couple of teams where we went out to two of my colleagues to support them in taking that step forward. And they agreed to go with us and be taken to a treatment facility and receive what they needed to save their lives. If they hadn't done that, they wouldn't have lived so long. See, life is precious and needs supporting. And we're called to help with that. Life really is a co-op. It's a co-op. You put in, and when it's your time, you receive back. It's a flow. And so sometimes we're summoned to participate in this cooperative relationship with our fellow human beings. And why? Because sometimes we're the right person who is most suited to help a certain person. Because it's an offer we really can't refuse. 
So Moses, in spite of all of his resistance, in spite of all of his excuses and all of his reasons for not wanting to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, he finally said, now you're not going to find this in the Bible. Okay, calm down, I'll do it. <laughs> when he stood before the burning bush on Mount Sinai, called by God to lead his folks, his people, out of Egypt, he felt initial inadequacy. But he acquiesced. He resisted. But eventually, he accepted an offer he couldn't refuse. And so we're called upon sometimes to do that as well. To serve in a capacity that only we can do. It's not the whim of another person that does this calling. It is the calling, really, of our higher selves, of our spiritual selves, of the burning bush that is represented inside each one of us. And in Hebrew, it's called the I am that I am. This is the essence of spiritual being. And so this burning bush experience teaches us to let go of the feelings of inadequacy, or at least be willing to, and to accept that the Spirit of God is going to carry us forward, that we're going to be able to do what we're called to do. It teaches us that the energy and vitality on a spiritual level is not going to be wasted or consumed. Remember this bush? It kept burning, but it didn't burn down. And Moses was totally like freaked out by, I go, how come that bush isn't burning down, but it keeps burning? That's representative of, of that eternal energy that's always there. It's not consumed when it's used. If in fact, it is more enhanced by its use. And so if you encounter a burning bush on your walk through the neighborhood tomorrow, run like hell. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. As the old saying goes, you can run, but you... Exactly. So instead, surrender to the prompting of spirit that is speaking to you. Hang out with it. Question it. But let it lead the way. You're not relinquishing free will. You're engaging your free will on a higher level. And now, we're going to engage ourselves in some musical, as soon as I figure out which song we're going to sing here, it's um, number 38 in the blue book, Spirit Calls, number 38. Now we have an opportunity to give of our treasure and our love to the support 
of this ministry and its mission and vision here in our community. There are many ways to give. One is through the bowls that we have in the front and the back, if you'd like to give a donation in that way. We also uh, recommend uh, using our website, unityofspringfieldil.org, and there's a donate link on that page. There's also a way to text at 217-335-4121, another way to give and you can also mail us a donation at, and we are team 417, I believe, 417 East Cordelia Street, Springfield, Illinois, 62703. And so take your gift in your hand. If it's a physical gift, if you give electronically, think of that gift as we bless it with these words of love and increase together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Amen. And now let us join together as we pray the prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us wherever we are. God is and all is well. And now will you rise and if you'd like to join hands as we sing, let there be peace on earth.